Uh, welcome everyone uh, for uh, joining our first global uh, fabric online conference uh, organized by my friend David. And uh, I'd like also to thank everyone for joining this first, very first online conference, as well as thanking also all the sponsors and volunteers without their effort, wouldn't be having this event today. Um, the session today will be about the self-service capabilities and site fabric, uh, specifically for data preparation using uh, Data Wrangler. And my name is Ashok Gunim. I'm based in Toronto, Canada. It's a nice sunny, warm day today with the temperature of 20 degrees. Uh, I work as a strategic management analytics consultant. I've been in this domain for 20 plus years. Uh, with um, the, my core area of expertise around strategy management, performance measurement, process improvement, and obviously data analytics as a key enabler for all those management disciplines. My educational background is bachelor degree in computer engineering and science, and also did my MBA in strategy management. I'm a certified balance scorecard professional and lean six sigma black belt, and also certified BMP. Uh, also Microsoft certified trainer, MCT. I'm the leader of Toronto Fabric and Power BI user group. I'm also a Microsoft Learning Expert, which is initiated by Microsoft for building a virtual community for learning, Microsoft uh, Fabric and uh, Power BI. And I'm the learning, uh, the learning expert there. I'm also organizer and the speaker of several Fabric and Power BI conferences. And I have been Microsoft MVP in data platform uh, since uh, 2018. I'm also the co-author of the first uh, Power BI MVP book, it's written by MVBs from all over the world. And that chapter I wrote in this book was about the AutoML capabilities inside Power BI. Also the co-author of the first Microsoft AI MVB book, again, written by uh, AI MVBs from all over the world. And that chapter I wrote was about the AI and cognitive services capabilities inside Power BI. Okay, let us jump to our uh, agenda today. We will be talking about Fabric Unified Analytics Platform, how Fabric is different, because that's that's the key starting point for us. Also, we will uh, touch quickly on the concept of the lake first and open architecture. Then we will deep dive into the data science experience in Fabric, specifically using the notebooks and data preparation. Then we will have in-depth demo about like the data wrangler, and I will walk you through the data wrangler and how you can use data wrangler as a data science. and. Uh, and uh, in Fabric. So Fabric Unified Analytics Platform. Obviously, you heard from the first two sessions how Fabric is, is a game changer. Because for those of you who come from a Power BI background, Fabric is basically giving like huge horsepower to Power BI. It's the combination of the best of both worlds, Synapse and Power BI. So we get the horsepower from Synapse and the ease of use and intuitiveness from the Power BI side. So the mix of both is what Fabric is all about. This will allow us to do complex data integration. We can leverage the data lake. We can leverage also the Spark uh, engine as a horsepower to do extensive data manipulation, data engineering, complex scenarios that we were not able to do that using Power BI alone. We also can build the entire data warehouse. We can handle real-time analytics. And we also can provide the data science experience, business intelligence experience, and obviously we can uh, improve the governance process because it's one unified platform from end to end. So the data governance is, uh, is, is more intuitive now and more easy to handle instead of having so many silos in our uh, infrastructure partner. So basically uh, the key uh, value for Fabric uh, and Fabric, for, from my perspective, is Fabric is actually decoupled all those compute uh, powers and compute engines uh, from the storage. And uh, this will allow us now to have one centralized uh, place where we have all the data centralized in what we call it one lake now, uh, which using the open structure parquet format and delta parquet format, and all the engines were redesigned actually to allow us now to handle the same files from different engines based on my uh, business needs, my skill sets, and so on. So now using the same data centralized in the one lake, I can write a T-SQL statement. I can use a Spark and can write QQL for streamline analytics. 
And obviously, I can build uh, uh, semantic models and do the analysis services on the top of the same exact physical copy of the data. Since we have all those capabilities inside Fabric, this will allow us to have uh, different personas in Fabric dealing with the data instead of having different silos. So we can do data engineering, uh, data in integration, data warehousing, data science, real-time analytics, and business intelligence using Power BI, of course. As you see, the spectrum is so wide, so the focus for our session today will be about the data science experience in Fabric. So keep in mind, this is not the only experience because we have so many other data, uh, sorry, uh, personas and experiences in Fabric to do different tasks and different activities to manage the entire spectrum and pipeline from end to end. So data science, basically what a typical data scientist does in the organization. A typical data scientist in an organization, they do data discovery, uh, data preparation, uh, they do experiments and build uh, model, predictive models. Uh, they also do the enrich and operationalize their model, deploy the model and operationalize it and expose insights to the organization. So this is typically what we expect from a, a data scientist in an, an organization. The preferred uh, uh, tool for uh, a typical data scientist in the organization is notebook. This is how they were trained. This is their skill where the skill sets uh, exist. Uh, so we are bringing actually and enabling them to have the same experience that they are comfortable with, which is the notebook, bringing that now to Fabric and allow them to uh, use the tool that they are comfortable with and familiar with and help them to actually write the code they are, uh, uh, they were trained to, 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 to how to handle the data using the, uh, the notebook and bring that to uh, the, uh, the Fabric now. And this is their uh, preferred tool of choice. For those of you who prefer actually to write code from a scratch and they are comfortable, that's perfectly fine. It's same environment, not very different from any notebook experience. You have the same structure, same format. You can run your uh, code. You can see the result of your code and so on. So how about those who are actually transitioning to the data science experience or they don't want to waste so much time uh, writing extensive code for uh, data preparation. So what Microsoft engineering team actually is the included actually in the data science experience and notebook in particular, a new tool called Data Wrangler. And Data Wrangler is basically is bringing the self-service capabilities that we had in Power BI. We are borrowing the same ideas and same concept and bringing that now, we're giving that now, this power now to the data scientists who are uh, using the notebook uh, to, um, uh, to handle the data and build their, their models. The main focus for Data Wrangler tool is to help with the data preparation, especially for those people who don't want to waste time or they don't want to actually to uh, write extensive code or they are not comfortable writing extensive code actually when it comes to data preparation because they're focused actually in building machine learning model and, 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 and how to do the deployment after that. So if you come from a uh, Power BI background, everyone is familiar with the Power Query Editor and how Power Query Editor is a, was a game changer in the Power BI because this is actually a very nice intuitive tool to allow us to do data manipulation, data transformation without the need for us to, to write a, a single line of code. It's all um, drag and drop, point and click, <clears throat> you choose from the menu, but the code is being generated behind the scene. So technically there is a code in Power Query Editor and even in the data flow and fabric, there is a code being generated behind the scene with every single interaction that you do when it comes to data transformation and data manipulation in from the menu and the mouse using um, the, the, the menu options, there is a code being generated behind the scene. Uh, obviously, the code is M language. So what the engineering team actually in Fabric is uh, bringing now this similar experience to empower and enable the data scientists in Fabric to have the same ease of use and intuitiveness that we had in Power Query Editor and data flows, we are bringing the similar experience to empower actually the data scientists who uh, chose uh, 
the to write the notebook. And this is the same concept. It's same idea. It's point and click, uh, drag and drop. Then the code is, be, is being generated behind the scene. So just keep in mind, Data Wrangler is not a standalone tool. It's a tool within the tool. So it's actually extension of the notebook to do some the transformation using the uh, the self-service capabilities. Then it generates a code behind the scene. And once you are done with your transformation steps, you will bring that code back to, again to your main notebook. So it's like a, a function, like a subroutine that you go from your main notebook, do the data transformation and data manipulation. Then once you are done with all the transform tr transformation and manipulation, you bring the code back that was generated by the tool to your notebook to execute it and deploy it after that. That's that's the idea of the data wrangler. So I hope everyone is, is, is clear on that and why we have another data transformation tool in Fabric. Why do we need to introduce a new data transformation tool? We also ha we already have like the data prep and data flows and um, and and uh, in fabric. Why are we introducing a tool? So just keep in mind, if the data transformation is consistent across the board, and it's being used to build the, like a data warehouse or even in the lake warehouse, you need to do that transformation in your data flow because that's the right tool actually to do the heavy lifting data transformation in uh, in your pipeline. But if once you are done with your data preparation and data transformation that is consistent across the board, then now imagine yourself wearing the hat of the data scientist who are sitting there and wants actually to build the machine learning model. So he already accessing the data that is already transformed and cleaned, cleaned in the data warehouse or in the lake house using the pipeline, but or the data flow, but they need to do their own specific local transformation for their own data science needs only for themselves, only in their notebooks. So that's actually why Data Wrangler was introduced to, as I said, to empower and help the data scientists to uh, speed up their data transformation process for their specific local uh, data science. OK, so enough of that, and we can now jump into our uh, demo. To show you exactly how. The uh, the data wrangler works in uh, in uh, in fabric. So the starting point is to make sure that you select a workspace that is fabric enabled. And. Once you click on the workspace that is already fabric enabled, as you see here in the corner, uh, the bottom left corner, uh, you click on that icon and you see here different personas and every persona here has different experience with different set of tools that is uh, designed actually to speed up the work. Either you are a Power BI professional or uh, building a data factory or uh, doing a data activators, or you are a data engineer in the organization or a data scientist, uh, or you are a data warehouse expert. So for the purpose of this session, as I said, the spectrum is so wide, obviously we cannot cover all those personas and experiences in Fabric. The only uh, area that we need to focus on right now is to choose the data science experience in, uh, in, in, in this workspace. Now, according to the selection, I'm wearing now the hat of a data scientist in my organization. Okay, and as you see here, uh, the uh, home screen for me was uh, switched actually to uh, with a set of um, uh, selections that is designed actually to help me as a data scientist to start working on uh, my project, either building a machine learning model or doing an experiment or a notebook, etc. So for the purpose of this demo today is we will be building a notebook uh, from scratch. So I'm now starting a new notebook, a brand new notebook uh, as a data scientist in the organization. And as you see here uh, on the left side, what is my data source? So I need to identify the data source for my notebook that I will be using actually to uh, start building uh, uh, my notebook. So I choose here uh, the lake house and here it's giving me two options. Either I'm building actually a new lake house or I'm choosing actually the data source from existing data warehouse. Oh, sorry, lake house. 
So I'll click uh, OK. Then it will give me a list of all the lake houses that I have already uh, in, in, uh, in my uh, fabric environment. So I pick one. Because again, the expectation here is we have already existing uh, lake house. But if you build a, a lake house from scratch, you still have the option actually to build a lake house from scratch. Then you upload the files, etc., and uh, continue with the uh, with the writing the uh, the notebook. So according to uh, my uh, lake house, I have like three tables here. And as you see, this is a very familiar menu for people who are uh, familiar with the notebook. So we have all the options and capabilities inside this notebook. And also we can identify uh, which uh, compute engine and spark uh, the flavor of uh, the, uh, the, 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 the spark that you need to use uh, to help you actually build the notebook. In in the menu here, you see a data wrangler in the menu, in the notebook itself. And this is the only way to access data wrangler. So the assumption here is you have a lake house, you have a notebook, you are writing a notebook, uh, and you leverage actually data wrangler from within the notebook. But when I click on that, there is nothing there. It's uh, empty. Why? Because the expectation here for the data wrangler to start working is you need to upload the data into data frame. So the starting point is where is the data first? Yes, I am connected to the lake house, but nothing is uploaded yet in the data frame. So for just very simple uh, selection here, I'll go to the table and just click on those three dots and choose load data. And Spark is the option here. So if I see, load is generated for me already. So data frame is this is the syntax section how to load the data from a table in the lake house to uh, a Spark data frame. I can, of course, I can rename it, but the code is, is there for me. Once I click Run, of course, it will connect again to my uh, table in the lake house and uh, upload the data into the, uh, in the data frame. Someone is, is raising their hand. I don't think anyone has the option actually to uh, to speak in the mic because it's disabled for all the attendees. So please, if you have any questions, uh, put that in the Q&A, please. OK, so as you see here, uh, the data is loaded already in my data frame. Uh, it's it's a, it's a very simple, uh, straightforward uh, data set. So the idea here is not to handle the complex scenario. I'm just like using this simple data set just to walk you through uh, the process, actually how to handle uh, uh, or how to use the data wrangler. So if I click now on data wrangler, as you see, I have under Spark data frame, I have this option now to uh, use the data frame that was just uh, created uh, here. Also, if you uh, go here to the bottom, I have the option as a data scientist to choose custom sample uh, 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 data from my data frame. One of the options typically used by data scientists is random. So this is by default is the first uh, 5,000 rows but you can choose that to random. So if you really need to have like a random sample uh, from your uh, data source, you can use those op these options and you identify the number of rows that you need in this uh, random sample. Okay, that's if you, if you want to do that. But in our case, we will just go ahead and use the entire data frame that we uh, created already in the notebook. OK, here you go. So that's how you see this one. There are so many good benefits, actually. First benefit, in my opinion, it's giving you a good data profile of your data. So it's not just a data transform, like it's not just a blind data transformation tool. It's also a data profiling tool. So it gives you a good sense of actually how your data is distributed. What are the columns that you need to keep or what are the columns that you need to distribute, uh, remove? Uh, if you have any missing values. So it gives you a good profile 
and the distribution of the data and identify any issues like missing values, zero cases, distinct values, 755. Also for the numeric field, uh, as you see, it, it gives you a distribution of the data. So it gives you a sense of actually the distribution between min, max, and how the data is distributed. Uh, also gives you the distinct value here and distinct value here. Uh, distinct value here as well. Uh, missing and so as you see, the uh, the profile will vary based on the type of each one, the data type of each one of the columns that you have. Uh, if you click on any numeric numbers, for example, this one here, it will give you more um, uh, profiling data about how the data is distribu distributed in more details. It's not just from a diagram perspective, as you see here, but also it gives you, uh, first of all, the data type of this particular column, the number of rows, the distinct values, any missing values, how many missing values are there, the mean, the standard division, the min, the 25th percentile, the median, uh, 75 percentiles maximum and so on, and the skewness as well of the data. So that's a very, very powerful because instead of wasting your time writing a bunch of lines in Python uh, to give you a sense of how the data is distributed or how to profile the data to inform you what transformation steps is required actually, or, or what are the transformation steps that are required actually for me to do, it's 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 so intuitive and so straightforward as you see here by just uh, opening the data wrangler here. Then on uh, the left side here, we have a bunch of predefined already set of operations uh, steps that we can apply against my data sets. Let us explore them quickly. The first set of operation is find and replace. So you can drop rows, number of rows, you can drop any missing values. If you have any missing values, uh, you can fill missing values with different techniques of the filling missing values. We can find and replace and so on. So those are a bunch of standard operation when it comes to find and replace. Formulas, you can convert, capitalize first character, uh, convert text to uh, lower case, convert text to uppercase, uh, transform by example, you can split text and so on. Well, when it comes to formula, we have a bunch of options in here. We, when it comes to numeric, you can do round, round up, uh, scale. When it comes to schema, you can again uh, change column type, clone column, uh, drop column, rename column, select the columns, and sort and filter. So basically, those are the pretty much the uh, uh, the frequently used operations when it comes to data uh, transformation and data manipulation that a typical uh, data scientists need to do uh, with the data set. Also, we can group and aggregate the data. And also, last but not least, which is very powerful, you can have new column uh, by example. So those are, again, a standard set of uh, standard operation or set of standard operation that you typically need to, uh, to use to transform uh, your data. So how it works. And here is the, remember in the Power Query Editor or uh, in the data flow in, in Power BI on the right corner or right side, we have the steps, the applied steps are captured there to give you a vis visibility actually to what, what operation uh, you choose uh, to be added here into your uh, transformation steps. So it will be captured there. So let us do a couple of uh, uh, scenarios here, or a couple of uh, examples, or walk you through a couple of examples to make sure that you understand the concept of uh, data angular and how it works. So let us go and say, okay, we need uh, drop duplicate rows. Of course, we don't have here, but I'm just showing you how it works. So as you see here, there is a, a panda. Uh, code that was generating uh, uh, for me to handle this scenario. So I didn't need actually to know how to, which function to use and what, what pandas uh, syntax that I need to use because it was automatically generated. So I just click apply and this is being added now as one of my transformation uh, step here. Okay, let us do another, uh, 
another scenario, for example. Let, let me get rid, as you see here, order date is uh, date time uh, format. And for the purpose of my analysis and my work as a data scientist, I am not interested actually in the timestamp. I just need to focus on the date value uh, uh, only. So I need to get rid of that. So one of the options here, uh, if I go here to date time formatting by example, I choose the order date. Okay, just watch what is happening now. So once I chose the order date, it gave it gave me already another uh, column here that you see next to it next to it right away. I just chose order date right next to it is giving me another uh, column. It's called drive to column. Of course, I can rename it. I can do whatever uh, name here order date only. Okay, and then. I, I can provide an example. What what do I need to extract or drive from the base column that I, I have here? So I can just go here, copy cell. I'm just giving you how intelligent and smart this one. OK, so I just copied the same value and simply or what I need to do is just remove the uh, timestamp portion of from my data and just click. Enter. See, it was able to intelligently understand exactly. I need to apply the same thing across the board, across all the rows that I have, um, and apply the same uh, transformation based on the example I provide. Imagine how many how many scenarios that you can think of when it comes to data transformation, and it it can be applied just by providing an example here. And as you see, the code was uh, generated already uh, for that step. I click apply. Here you go. So I have now the new column, the drive column, uh, which is order date only. Do I still need to do that uh, to keep that? Obviously not. So I can go ahead and drop this call. Because I don't need it anymore because for the purpose of my work, I just need to focus on the date only. OK, and how this is actually all the stops are applied here, as you see here, uh, one after the other. Let us do another example. Let us say, OK, for um, the customer name. Uh, for this customer name, let us assume uh, again, it's not it's not very uh, common use case, but let us assume that I need to spread the first name from the last name for whatever reason. It could be the other one. It could be merging actually the first name and, and, and uh, or combine the first name and last name. But let us say for the purpose of this one, we need to split. The uh, the uh, customer name. OK. And it's asking me the delimiter. What kind of what what is the delimiter here to use uh, to um, to use as a, a separator between uh, the first and last name? So I just uh, click space here. That's it. So I just provide the space as the delimiter to split the columns uh, or the names and the first name from the last name. Okay, that's it. So and as you see here, it's. See, it's giving me more insights now. The total number of names, 745 of the unique names. But when it comes to the first name only, we have 396 distinct name, first name. And when it comes to the family name or the last name, we have 203 only. Uh, they share the same family. OK, so can be useful for some specific use case or scenarios. That's that's perfectly cool. So I can just click apply. And as you see here, we have the new columns and we can, of course, 
rename this column to see, call it uh, rename. And also we can do the same thing, rename column. And as you see, every interaction I have with the data, there is apply the step here uh, associated with, with this, this transformation step. Last name. Okay. Another example, maybe, maybe uh, I need to see uh, to separate the actual email from the domain. I need to see how many domains that I have, because obviously the distinct value here is 745. Uh, but what if I need to do analysis based on how many unique domains I have in my data set? So uh, again, similar, uh, similar idea is split text. This time, the delimiter I use is the at sign. Not sure why it's not responding here. Oh, sorry. I need to choose the call. Sorry, it's my mistake. Email address. Oh. The transformation is being running now. And here you go. So I split the actual uh, name in the email versus the domain itself. And as you see here, we, oh, of course, based on my data set, is just like a consistent domain name across the board. But uh, assuming that I have a scenario to, uh, to do any analysis based on how many unique domains I have in my data set. Okay. Uh, so those were uh, some examples actually of uh, some of the transformation. Of course, I can go here and get rid of the, the actual one. Drop this column. And as you see here, another step was added here, drop columns. I'll just click apply. And similar to that, I can just rename this one and call it domain. Just apply. Okay, here you go. So I'm 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 assuming now I'm done with all my transformation. I don't need to do any further transformation. Again, this is just a simple one. And as you see here on the top left corner, I click on that, preview the code for all the steps because every single one here individually was an individual step, one after the other. Here, if I click on preview code for all the steps, here I have all the Python code or the pandas code that was generated actually behind the scene to handle all my transformation steps without me writing a single line of code, even without knowing how to write uh, pandas code. By the way, I'm, as a matter of fact, I don't know how to write pandas code, as a matter of fact. So, and as you see, I was able actually to build this script to handle the same complex scenarios. And it can even be more complex without the need for me to understand or how to write a single line of code in Python or in Python. Okay, then I'm done here. So where is my notebook now? So I'm done in the data wrangler. I'm still in the, keep in mind, I'm still in the data wrangler. What happens after that? How to take that into uh, my, uh, back to my notebook. Here on the top of the corner, add code to notebook. And this is the beauty of it now. So I moved away from notebook to handle those complex data transformation. First of all, get the data profiling, identify any data quality issues or the transformation needs and requirement, etc. With the powerful uh, data profiling capabilities that we have in the data wrangler, I was able to identify and just put some uh, transformation uh, um, uh, actions that we need to do. Then I was able actually to do that using the point and click drag and drop capabilities that we have and even provide example to do some of the transformation. Then the code was generated for me uh, automatically. Then the last step here is I need to go back again to my notebook because I need to continue the rest of my work to build the machine learning model and do the split of the data and build the experiment and so on. So as you see here, it's the code uh, was generated in pandas, but it was converted actually to by Spark code. 
and this is a very, very powerful technique as well, because the code is, because I started with Spark, right? So it's, 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 it's converted, actually translated to Spark. But I also have the other option here to include it as pandas code. Since I started with the Spark by Spark, uh, is the right choice for me, but I also can have another version in Pandas code, and you can compare those two. Okay, just for the purpose of this demo, I just click that to give you uh, the sense of uh, the difference between how the Pandas handle this uh, those transformation steps versus the by Spark and how each one uh, can be different from the other one, but. Once I'm uh, I'm okay here with my selection, I just click add. Here we go. We are back again to my base notebook where I started my journey with the first step here, which is load the data into the data frame and uh, visualize the data here. But as you see here, we have two cells here in my notebook. The first one is in written in pandas. Uh, syntax, and this is all the transformation steps that uh, I already did uh, in Data Angular. But there is also, if you scroll down here, another cell, the same code with the same transformation, but it's written in PySpar uh, syntax. Okay, so you can actually compare these two for learning purposes if you need to actually put them next to each other and understand exactly how each one handles those. Um, uh, transformation scenarios or or transformation steps, and uh, you can actually compare them next to each other. Now, since it's a notebook, you have the options to choose which cell do you need to run to apply all those transformation steps. Let's choose uh, the PySpark option and just to click uh, on that. Remember, Data Wrangler is not doing any transformation in your notebook. Uh, alone. It's just a tool to help you speed up your coding uh, process and generate the code for you. Then it automatically takes that code back to your notebook because notebooks, the scope for the notebook is much bigger than the data transformation steps that we do in, um, in the data angle. Because in your notebook, you can start with uploading the data then do the transformation, build a machine learning model, uh, then you do the deployment or you schedule the process and, and, and so on. So the notebook scope is much wider than just the transformation uh, 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 scope. So just keep that in mind. And as you see here, this is the, uh, our now the cleaned version of the data after we did uh, the transformation steps. Okay, one last transformation step here. Uh, we go again. What if I missed a step? Yeah, let us say that, okay, uh, that looks good. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to do and I intended to do, but I need to summarize my data a little bit for, for any purpose. Uh, uh, let us say, okay, uh, I need to do additional transformation step here. Uh, I'll click on Data Wrangler again, and now I, as you see, I have options here: uh, the data frame, the original one I started with, and the cleaned version of my data. So I'll start with the cleaned version of my data. That's the starting point for me now, right? Because I don't need to reinvent the wheel again. And let us say I need to do a simple aggregation. I need for each order, I need to see what was the total tax for each order, or per day, what was the total tax uh, per day, for example. Okay. So for the schema, select columns. So those the two columns I selected. I just need to keep them and I get rid of the rest of my uh, data set. Just click apply. Those are the only two columns, but this is still order number, right? Order number can be a, a duplicate based on the order um, line. So what I really, what if I need to aggregate actually 
uh, the, uh, the tax amount per order, regardless of how many order lines I have. So what I need to do is go here, group and aggregate. So the group by column, of course, I need to group by the order number. Let us see if we have multiple order uh, numbers here or not. Then what I need to aggregate is the save tax amount. As you see here, it's giving me options here to choose from multiple aggregate uh, functions. So let us say, OK, I need to do the count. And sorry, count, count. And also I need to do no the The summation. Actually, this should be the sales order. Okay, I think we should be okay. So I'm ordering actually how many uh, times the same order number was repeated, which is the count. Then I will get the aggregation of the tax amount as well. So those are two uh, group by options I have. Then click apply. And here you go. My expectation was correct. So this order was repeated three times. That means it's associated with uh, three uh, order lines. And this is the total tax amount for this order is this amount based on the summation of those three lines and so on. Another order here was two, the majority are ones, but we have two, three and so on. And of course, sort. And here you go, the maximum number was five uh, lines associated with this order, but their total tax is this amount because that's exactly the transformation uh, that I. Once I click apply here. Again, the whole code was generated for me again without the need for me to write any single line of code without even uh, knowing how to do uh, or write pandas code. Same idea. Once I'm done with the mouse transformation, click add. Again, uh, I can include pandas if you want. We can skip this uh, for, uh, for now. Then I can just add. And here you go. After the first transformation, remember that was the first transformation. Which is uh, that was the result of the first transformation. Then if I scroll down here, I have another cell with the additional aggregation that I did here uh, in, uh, in my last scenario. So if I click OK now to execute it, here you go. That's exactly the result, which is similar to uh, what we saw already in the preview of an uh, end editor. So that's pretty much uh, the data wrangler. Uh, I hope that uh, was uh, a useful demo for you guys, especially if you are new and it can encourage you actually to uh, start using notebooks and also start uh, playing with the data wrangler to speed up your very time. Uh, very time consuming actually uh, activity that we typically have, which is again data transformation. By the way, typically the majority of our time, either we are building a data warehouse or we are doing data science, guess where we spend the majority of our time is in the data manipulation and data transformation. So imagine the impact of those self-service capabilities and self-service uh, tools on uh, the time that we spend in data transformation and uh, data manipulation and how do this can impact actually significantly impact actually to reduce this time significantly and to speed up our uh, data transformation. OK, I hope that was uh, a useful uh, demo for you and back to my slides.
OK, so where to go from here? Um, if you guys are interested to learn more, of course, keep keep attending those conferences. And thanks again, David, for putting, putting this on uh, organizing this conference. But also, I wanted to let you know, guys, we have another initiative under Microsoft. It's called Microsoft Learning Rooms. It's uh, it's ongoing virtual learning room. It's managed by Microsoft and on Microsoft Teams. And as you see here, uh, if you go, you just Google Microsoft Learning Rooms directory, you will see so many options uh, to choose from. When it comes to different product, different areas, uh, some of them are related to AI or Copilot or uh, business applications or um, or Power Platform. There are so many options here. So if you put the filter here for Microsoft Fabric, you will see all uh, three rooms uh, currently available uh, for Fabric. I'm I lead one of them, which is the Fabric and Power BI. Uh, feel free to join this room. Also, David and some other uh, MVB colleagues, they run uh, another room, the first one. And uh, also we have a third one, uh, which is the Fabric Cafe. Uh, so those are the three options that we currently have in uh, for Fabric in the Microsoft Learning Group. The how to join is so easy. Just Google it. Google it now. Microsoft Learning Room Directory. So blur the options there. Pick and choose uh, the room that you are interested in based on the topic and the subject. And by the way, you can join multiple rooms at the same time. Nothing stops you from joining multiple rooms. So feel free to join the room uh, that you would like to join. And as I said, it's ongoing. There is no specific session there. Some some rooms they have a specific sessions, uh, live sessions. Some rooms they just share resources, materials, uh, questions and answers. Uh, some rooms they share um, tips and tricks how to pass the DB six hundred exam. Uh, in the rooms also, in my room also you have uh, the options actually to connect with people who want to build virtual study groups to write the PL300 exam, the Power BI exam, and uh, also virtual uh, study groups to encourage each other and help each other to pass the DP600 exam. So there are like, people are interested in uh, in this uh, study group, PL300, and other people or some other people there can be interested actually in virtual study group for the DP600 uh, exam. Those who already passed the exam and successfully managed to pass the exam in the past, they come to the room and share uh, some tips and tricks and, and some useful resources that can help you uh, take your uh, knowledge uh, about Fabric to the next level. So I encourage everyone to explore this good initiative from Microsoft. It's, it's totally managed under Microsoft Learn, by the way. So it's a Microsoft initiative. Also, uh, please, uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with the community all the time. I'm a community person, and uh, feel free to reach out to me and uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. You can easily find me on LinkedIn. Just uh, type search my uh, name, and this is how my profile look like. And uh, I would be more than happy to connect with every one of you. If you have any additional question or further questions after the end of the sessions, I would be more than happy to uh, help you. Or if you have any challenge or any support or you need any, anything, feel free to reach out to me 